Um, as Zuki's already mentioned, I'm a bit of a dick, so I might have written it down word for word. It's really quite organised, so I apologise if it seems a bit rigid. Um, so yeah, also mine's a little bit different. I want to talk about some things I've done this year and hopefully achieved. And I'll try and find a bit of analysis here and there as well. So yeah. Um, so the first time I ever came to the university with Birmingham was in an open day back in 2007, back in primary school. And I remember driving through Eastgate with my dad and glancing over to the left and seeing a building which had a guild of students on the side. I thought, ah, oh, that must be the student union. Instantly dismissing it, think, well, you won't need to go there. That's not what the university is about. Well, five years later, I can safely say that I was very, very horribly wrong. My first involvement with the Guild came back in 2008, when I was the first year, when I applied to be the Vice President for Services and Environment at the Shackleton Hall Residents Association. I wasn't quite sure what an RA was. As the, R as the RA, when I was the first year, we meant to be inducting us into, into our halls and making sure the time of our lives didn't really exist. And the only recollection I have of the then President was a video of him on YouTube downing a bottle of red wine at an alarmingly quick rate. <laughs> Thankfully, the RA scheme's moved on a bit since those days. <laughs> <laughs> um, but nevertheless, I was lucky enough to pick up one of the flyers that were posted through our letterbox, and for once I actually read it, didn't just chuck it in the bin. I'm not really sure why, but it was a decision that changed my life. So I went in onto the Guild with my application form, managed to find a representation of Democracy Was, which is now student voice, which used to be on the top floor by marketing, didn't make any sense. And I handed in my form to the representation coordinator, only to be told that it was a day late. Um, so despite my protestations that no one else was standing, I mean, he might, he might as well just accept it. I, I, I was told to wait until the by-elections until January. So luckily I took this advice, and after asking someone in this room who became an RA, whether it was worth it, thank you to him, <coughs> I proceeded to boss the by-election against our old foe, Ron, and started my journey in the Guild, even if it was a few weeks late. So that year of 2009 was incredible. I can't really put it into words, and for those of you who have been in RA, you'll know what I mean. I'm sorry to drive on about the RA scheme. But it honestly was one of the best experiences of my life. As an RA, we had to start from scratch, as we really inherited nothing from the previous committee, so we had to build a full spirit from scratch, a community spirit, and we really, really honestly had nothing. And that all culminated in September of that year, where we... We, I like to think we made 350 freshers on the best time of their lives, and I could quite honestly say it was one of the best time of my life. Of my life here. Um, and it's down to my time as an RA that I know how powerful that scheme is, and its ability to make or break people's time in halls and ultimately university. RAs really are the life and soul of first year, and while the scheme's undergone quite a lot of change since my time, I firmly believe with the right resources available to them, and a combination of the right people with the right motive, and enough freedom given to them, they've got the ability to turn or indeed maintain the RE scheme as the best thing that this guild does. Yeah. Um, I was also involved in my departmental society. This was also made from scratch from my good friend Mark. Um, not only did we organise the customary socials and bar calls, we also replaced what were non-existent student reps on student staff committees with elected society representatives. Although I now realise how wrong that was. It was a good idea at the time, but really by the book it was awful. Um, and organised a number of key fields, uh, sorry, key talks with academics in our field. Also, I was on Burn FM and show sports banter, it was a good laugh, on the best sports show, it was, it was good fun. Um, I held up uh, Blue Hoodie, did some officer campaigns, and it was then when I sort of decided I might run for office myself, but I'll get to that in a minute. Also, sat on Guild Council in a number of these guises, and I honestly had no idea what was going on. I was never really involved in the politics of the Guild and didn't really have much of an opinion on what was going on, but I still weirdly enjoy it, which is probably why I'm where I am now. Um, I could count the number of times I actually got up to speak on one hand, as I was far too intimidated and didn't really know enough about what was being debated, and thought that any point I made would easily be shot down by one of the more experienced councillors in the room. And I suppose the lesson from this is that you don't have to be uber involved or indeed really vocal on issues going on in the Guild in order to achieve things. So for those of you who are sitting there without the inclination or the confidence to partake in these debates, I know how you feel, I'm one of you, and trust me, it doesn't need to hold you back. So I suppose this leads me nicely on to why I decided to run for a special position in the first place. When I was an RA, I barely knew what a SAB was, let alone how you become one. Obviously we had our VPHD, Augie, who sat there, but never really clicked he was part of a wider team, and I guess I wasn't really that interested. Um, the seed was planted when a former Red Brick editor, a guy in the year above me on the course called Nick Petrie, decided to run for president um, in 2010, so I've been against Dora. Um, he, and he asked me to help out. All the campaign meetings were really confusing, and I wasn't really sure what the parameters were for the elections or what the position of president really did. 
Um, although I had a great two weeks campaigning, and it's through that I really realised what officers do and how we're able to change the experience here at Birmingham. So I began to think, maybe I could do that, just maybe. Obviously I did decide there and then, I went to, uh, but as I went into my third year, some months later, I actually began to take the idea more seriously before deciding to actually take the plunge and risk it. Um, I'm blessed that organisation is actually one of, my, one of my strong points, so I set, set about putting together a team and a campaign that I thought might stand a chance in these elections. Um, now there's a lot of talk in this Guild Council and after the last elections about the makeup of these officer elections, and while I'm well aware that nothing is perfect, running in these elections actually takes some very similar skills to being a spatter officer. And this is the first time I've mentioned you, I'm sorry, but this analogy comes from Zuki. Um, you need organisational skill to run in elections and you need the ability to inspire others. You need to be creative and come up with innovative solutions to problems that may arise. You need the ability to speak to people of all different backgrounds on many different levels. <coughs> and you need the ability to answer your critics and counter arguments that may come your way. And finally, you need to be tough and be able to put in long hours for weeks on end with very little food and very little sleep. Now, if you can't meet those requirements for two weeks, you certainly won't be able to meet, meet them for 12 months. Rightly or wrongly, that is the way it is. And I'm of the belief that the intensity of elections is actually a good thing and prepares you for what is a very demanding year in office. It's not easy, it shouldn't be easy, and I know some people disagree with me, but that's my views and I'm sticking to it. So, I was lucky enough to win my election against some very credible opponents, both Chris Richardson Wright and Chris Nash, who is in the room here, um, would have made some great VPDRs and both made the Guild a better time during their time here, sorry, a better place during their time here. Um, so for those of you who've actually read my Guild Council reports, so there's one or two of you in the room, and my blogs, um, so I'm just going to briefly say how I've hopefully achieved some of my manifested pleasures this year, and Johnny, please feel free to tell me to hurry up, and I will. Um, uh, Chief of Drinks, Joe's loyalty card, I'm going to take too long, we saved £40,000 in two terms, if you look, compare Joe's price prices to other selling prices, we're actually the cheapest, and, so, and that's fantastic, we're rolling out the cards to other outlets, Hopefully, Sally Oak, Roost House, Sunny Sausage, cool things like that. Um, and the. Roost House? Oh, that's not the best thing ever. <laughs> um, and the biggest challenge for the card going forward, which my successor will take on, is making it making better value um, club nights, particularly found and fresh, while not putting at risk the Guild's major revenue streams that fund such great services, like the Shack and Job Zone. Um, additionally, one of the real reasons why I actually ran for election is to sort the Guild website. Now, it's no secret that uh, out of date is an understatement, and a new one is sorely, sorely needed. But I really enjoy getting to grips with the replacement, but I found out that creating a fit-for-purpose website is not an easy task. We've been working in partnership with NUS Digital as one of five pilot unions with the vision of moving over to a completely new, all-singing, all-dancing web platform in the very near future. Now, I know working with the NUS, doesn't inspire confidence in some people, and I'm one of those included. And my favourite nickname for the new website so far is actually Skynet, <laughs> after the Terminator series. But let me assure you, it won't take over the world and turn on nuclear weapons against us just yet. The amount of work and money that has gone into this project by the NUS is actually quite phenomenal, and they've got a lot riding on it, which is why I'm quite confident it will be a success. We've had a unique chance to shape this project as we see fit, and I can't wait for it to go live, hopefully before September. Um, I've accepted the fact that despite all the time I've, and work I've put into it, I won't be around to see it launch. So while it's obviously disappointing, I'm sure that you guys can take all the credit for what will be a huge improvement on what we've already got. Um, just so you know, it won't be the finished article in September, we the first phase of a three-step programme, but it will be amazing, trust me. And it will hopefully benefit students long after I'm gone. So continuing on the positive note, I'm also proud of a number of other achievements during my time in office. Some have been popular, many maybe not so. <laughs> One of my favourite quotes I've tried to apply to this year is good command decisions get compromised by bad emotional responses. Not the fluffiest of phrases, yet something in the VPDR role that is quite essential to get by. Um, the first two elections of the year, Guild Council and RA elections, saw a massive turnout Guild Council that you guys got let's do so on over 100% increase. That was fantastic, made it look really good, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Additionally, RA elections, we put them online for the first ever time. This was a huge sentimental uh, departure from, from myself and, and Zuki because anyone who's been involved in RAs thought it was really great doing it on by ballot, but online is the future and it'll really help them go <coughs> forward. Um, election front, on the elections front as well, the most enjoyable two weeks of my year in office was definitely the officer elections and seeing it from a different side in the Guild really isn't as fun as being out on campus. Um, however, the buzz and excitement that those two weeks bring is uh, bring, uh, only matched by the first two weeks of the year in pressures. 
Um, and as I mentioned earlier, elections aren't easy, but I hope all of, those, all of you took part in them, whether as a candidate, campaigner, or voter enjoyed them as win or lose. I hope, hope it's a worthwhile experience for all. Um, a couple of changes. Oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make sure I did something to change with the election. Some were popular, some weren't. I opened the voting three days earlier, thought it worked, didn't work. I wouldn't do it next year. I'll go back to Monday, not Friday. Uh, let's take a big chunk out. Um, I bought a thing called Vote Match here, and some people loved it, some people didn't. I actually thought it was a really good idea. It didn't work as well as I thought, but in the future it's going to be standardised in student union elections, and I think we'd be foolish to cast aside up on the basis of one year experience. Um, what else? Oh, yeah, I had a rant about officers not being able to make decisions because we criticised by leave that. <laughs> <laughs> but looking at obviously the elections as a whole, that those two weeks, um, nobody was more disappointed than myself to receive less votes than last year. Um, but in a national and historical context, with over 6,000 6, votes, it's still an achievement to be proud of. And, but with the drop in candidate numbers, it was always on the card, especially cards, especially when the Guild spent far too much time talking to itself this year. Uh, moving back over to resources very briefly as I've rambled for a while. Got Santander in replacing HSBC, that with us for 30 years. Um, we've had to move the shack ahead of schedule, but that's good because it's now in a bigger place and can grow. Um, Costa's coming in, all big by Costa. Um, I know some people weren't very happy about it. Again, it was it's turning what is an underused space into a, a much better space and spending a lot of money in there. That's not our money, brilliant. Um, additionally, with over the bar sales, uh, a bit boring bit. With over the bar sales and student unions nationally declining, we're going to have to look for different sources of revenue streams, and things like this are invaluable to student unions like us. And if it means if it means uh, us benefiting in the next five to ten years, I'm happy to take the ball for that in the short run. Um, so yeah, I've rambled on for a, a while, but I wanted to talk about what I've done in the year rather than some other negative things. Um, so yeah, everything that I've spoken about would not have been possible without the help and support from everyone here in the Guild. And before I talk about the officers, my first thanks must go to the unsung heroes of, of the Guild who make it what it is. That's right, the big, bad, shady stuff. The rumours, speculation and outright lies that have been circulated, circulated this year about staff members make me so angry and the audacity of people to go off hearsay and often third or fourth hand information to spread untruths about people who work at the Guild is naive at best and despicable at worst. The passion and expertise of our staff members never fails to impress me. It's been an absolute pleasure coming to work every day, knowing I get to work with people who are as, pa as passionate about in uh, improving the student experience at Birmingham as I am. I know they don't get a right reply, but thank you for everything you've done for me this year. And next year's team, I'd like to have you. To the staff, my colleagues and, and my friends, sharing this year with you has been an absolute, absolute pleasure and I would love to run through your individual qualities one by one, but as you know, I'm not a very overtly emotional person. <laughs> <laughs> and in a stereotypical bloke sort of way, I have troubles with feelings and other such confusing things like that. <laughs> but you're all brilliant and I love you all equally. Um, while we couldn't have predicted the things that have happened this year, many of the events have brought us much closer together and I'm delighted to have made many lifelong friends that I'm going to miss terribly once our year is up. Um, so and despite the things that you may have read or heard about or on Facebook, we've got some fantastic officers there who've done some brilliant things for students and don't let anything that's happened this year overshadow that. Also very quickly I'd like to commend some non-SABs often that get, don't get the recognition they deserve. We've been lucky enough this year to have some really, really phenomenal ones. So uh, Jen Kirk, Nori Karambakas, Vicky Royal, Kelly Rogers, Emily Halford and Michaela Jones, you've all done brilliant jobs um, in your roles. Additionally Johnny and Rob, you've been great. Um, having the VCDR chair relationship is quite important and we've had some really able chairs this year. We've been absolutely fantastic. So I'm just going to wind this up because it's been a while and um, I know some people want to hear what Mark has to say, which is understandable. Um, all in all, I've had a fantastic year and made some great friends along the way. And if you're considering running for an officer position in the future, please do it, as it is without doubt the best thing you can do at university and you definitely won't regret it. Additionally, also, additionally, it's very easy to stand outside the house and throw stones at it, but it's much harder and much more rewarding to build the house from the inside, brick by brick. So in the words of Jed Bartlett, do what is hard, achieve what is great. So thank you very much to the Guild for everything it's given me. It's with great sadness that we'll be finally saying goodbye, and it's been a pleasure to be your Vice President for Democracy Resources this year. I hope I've done a little bit of good along the way, and wish you all the very best for the future. Thank you. Thank you.